Welcome back to It's Vase Productions. Uh, today we are reacting to Jim Gaffigan. He's actually one of my favorite comedians, but I haven't seen any of his recent stuff. This is from, I think, his special called Noble Ape, and it's called Losing Arguments with Your Wife After Her Brain Surgery. <laughs> uh, Jim Gaffigan's always hilarious, so let's just get her started. Yeah. Thank you for coming out. It is great to be here. Thank you so much. It is. It's been a crazy year for me. Crazy year. I don't know if you know, in April, it was discovered my wife had a brain tumor. I'm not even making this up. It was removed. She's great. Everything's good. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't remove it. I, I was in the other room soiling myself, but... The tumor is gone, along with my ability to ever win another argument. <laughs> it's not like I was winning a lot before, but now I'm retired. <laughs> and luckily, my wife's not the type to bring it up. Well, once she did, she was like, you know, I did have brain surgery. And I couldn't be like, yeah, that was like a month ago. <laughs> it's time to move on, you know? What about my seasonal allergies? <laughs> We all have our cross to bear. <laughs> it was crazy. You know, the, the surgeon told me the tumor was the size of a pear, which is scary, but also confusing. I was like, did he go to med school or a farmer's market? <laughs> but tumors are often compared to fruit. A pear, a lemon, a grapefruit. Interesting fact, worst tumor, grapefruit. Worst fruit, grapefruit. <laughs> When you think about it, a grapefruit looks more like a tumor than a fruit. I almost feel sorry for grapefruit. Yeah, we can't win, yeah? We're already the worst fruit, and now we're compared to the worst tumor? Well, at least we help old people poop. That is the worst impression of a grapefruit ever. <laughs> it's kind of unfortunate that there's another fruit that's much smaller named Grape. Because you know there's situations in doctor's offices, we found a tumor, it's the size of a grape. Thank God, I didn't finish. <laughs> grapefruit. Oh, that's, that's very different. It was strange. You know, when, when the doctor told me the tumor was the size of a pear, I thought, wow, I guess doctors are bad at analogies. But I quickly realized they're just dumbing it down for idiots like me. Like the surgeon looked at me and thought, well, this guy's not gonna understand centimeters. I don't even wanna try and explain circumference. Based on appearance, he doesn't eat fruit, but... He's probably seen a pear when he's at the grocery store buying ice cream. I don't know why the surgeon sounds like Andy Rooney. Never notice tumors look like fruit. By the way, if you don't know who Andy Rooney is, you're a child. And if you do know who Andy Rooney is, you should probably eat more grapefruit. <laughs> Tumors compared to fruit, they're, they're sometimes they're compared to balls, like a golf ball or a softball. But the surgeon looked at me and thought, I'm gonna stick with food. I got a better shot of this fat ass understanding. I joke around, but it was scary. We have five children. And there were moments when I was like, oh my gosh, if anything happens to my wife, those five kids are gonna be put up for adoption. Some of these jokes are just for the fathers. <laughs> My wife was so amazingly strong and brave during this whole experience. For three months after the surgery, she couldn't eat solid foods. And our friends would send us the most delicious food she couldn't eat. So I found myself hiding the food and secretly eating it. <laughs> it's like a whole new eating disorder for me. Am I supposed to feel shame? Because I'm helping my wife. <laughs> really, I'm a hero. <laughs> she mostly ate jello. 
Jello, you know what they make Jello out of? Bones and hooves. I always thought that was an urban legend. Bones and hooves. What kind of madman? Let me have the bones and hooves. I've got an idea for a kid's dessert. It'll be huge. We'll get Cosby to do the commercials. Everyone trust him. Anyone using the eyeballs? I can make an abacus. I've got tons of ideas. They say laughter is the best medicine, and it is after you've received real medicine from a real medical professional. Prior to that, you don't want any laughter. You don't want a doctor giggling during an exam. Oh my gosh, this is your body? Oh, nice man boobs. My wife uh, had the surgery in New York City at a hospital named Mount Sinai. I've noticed that a lot of hospitals in the U.S. are either named after saints or ancient places in Israel, which is not that reassuring when you think about it. It's like, hi, welcome to our hospital. We're all about science, which is why our building is named after the place God talked to Moses as a burning bush. <laughs> Over here's our Casper the Ghost Wing next to our astrology center. Do you like UFOs? We love those. <laughs> We're all about science. Spent two weeks in the hospital. People that work in hospitals are truly amazing people. They are so nice and supportive. It makes you suspicious, right? Are they stealing the drugs? They're a little too excited to be around sick people in pajamas. And when I say sick, I'm not talking about the positive slang, right? Because that's, that's part of our language, right? That jacket is sick! But you don't want a medical professional to be like, your test results are sick! <laughs> I mean, let me clarify, you're, you're dying. <laughs> it's gotta be hard to work in a hospital. That hospital lighting, everyone looks sick in that hospital lighting. I walked in, they're like, we should get you to the ER. <laughs> I'm just here to see my wife. Well, you have jaundice. <laughs> see, come here. Oh my gosh, I have jaundice too. We all have jaundice. <laughs> when my wife would nap, I'd go to the cafeteria. Hospitals have the most cutting edge medical equipment, but they're still serving food like it's Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> How about selling an MRI machine and getting a pasta station? <laughs> Jim, you're a monster. <laughs> There's different sections in hospitals. There's the emergency room, the intensive care unit, which sounds scary, but I don't know why anyone would want to stay anywhere but the intensive care unit. That kind of implies the rest of the hospital's like, look, we care, but we're not gonna be a spaz about it. I get a phone call, I'm gonna take it, right? We're like the mediocre care unit, which is better than we couldn't care less unit. Those guys are horrible. It was wild. My wife was in surgery for 10 hours, and before the surgery, the surgeon told me, he goes, halfway through, I'll probably stop and get lunch. <laughs> I don't need to know that. <laughs> Why even tell me that? <laughs> was he afraid I was gonna run into him in the cafeteria? <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> I get these cravings. <laughs> Those Snickers commercials are true. Uh, Jim Gaffigan. Not nearly as much of that had to do with him losing arguments to his wife, but as I imagined it would, but uh, still very funny. Um, he's one of my favorites. I'll probably checking out some more of his stuff, but uh, if you have any suggestions for other comedians or other clips or other things like that, send them my way and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Uh, I, th I believe Classic Clue Review uh, told me to check out Jim Gaffigan. And like I said, even though I'm already a big Jim Gaffigan fan, if you tell me to look at a comedian, do a, a reaction to it, I will. So, I don't know. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> <laughs>